Don't. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Conversations with Jane Espenson. How are you guys? the moderator should we just jump right in i think i'm technically i think i just defaulted to moderator we, we can conversate with you i mean <laughs> oh conversate's not a word conversate the irony of that sentence what do you think conversate? well i want to i want to tell you who these guys are in case you don't know um brad bell also known as cheeks Woo! and sean hemian known as sean hemian Brad Bell and I co-wrote and co-created Husbands, which is the online comedy. Oh my God, you guys know it. You guys are awesome. Oh yes. And Sean Hamian is the um, the husband uh -huh. in Husbands. So we will be talking. You guys, we're, we're gonna. Our moderator is here. He's gonna start explaining what's gonna go on. But you guys are gonna have chance to ask questions of all of us. Okay. Let's get a little bit of a house cleaning out of the way first. If you've got a cell phone, please put it on vibrate or silent. Please do not take calls during the panel. Go out of the room and take it. We'll wait on you. Um, <laughs> secondly, flash photography and video is permitted until our guests get tired of it, and then we, wish you, we ask that you respect their wishes and stop flashing things in their face. Oh, you could, we and that could be taken in several contexts, but remember, this is we a like. Saturday morning, and this is a family show. All right, all it's right. Not a family show. <laughs> I was referring to Dragon Con, but okay. that's just legal jargon. I have to say that. Whatever happens afterwards, I'm not responsible. So. Now, I don't see any youngsters. There's nobody under the age of 13 in here, is there? Yes. Okay. Oh, hold up yeah. Minute. Well, but the content we're going to show is PG-13. It's a Fair. tiny Fair. baby. Will, a tiny baby won't remember that. I will go ahead and let you guys baby. know. I will, what, was this person that's 13 here yesterday? Were you here yesterday? What, the baby? No, the, the person that's <laughs> under underage. Oh. oh. The baby. Fine. If they were here yesterday, the damage has been done. You have nothing to worry about. So this is day two. <laughs> Okay, as I stated earlier, we're going to set a couple mics up in the aisles like we always do for our Q&As. Those are my staff members. They're wonderful, wonderful Joss Whedon fans just like me. And you can line up behind them. Please kneel so that people can see you, uh, can see around you. And we're going to go back and forth with questions. If you're in the audience and you're raising your hand for questions, go get on a mic, please. Don't let the people in front of the line have to wait on you. But unless it's a really good question that you think is going to, you know, drive the conversation. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start over on this side uh, with this person right here. Please toss us a question. Wait, do you want me to get screen hands first? Uh, you know what? Let's do that while we get our. Uh, yeah. Well, um, out of curiosity, raise your hand if you have not seen husbands. Perfect. Oh <laughs> All right. So this needs a little setting up then. Yeah. Um, Feels like okay, you're yeah. the mic. Are you too close? Sorry, am I too loud, you guys? <laughs> Um, okay, Husbands is an online comedy, Brad and I co-created it, and it is about this young married couple, um, and they get drunk married in Vegas, and they realize they've only known each other six weeks, what are we going to do? One, Sean Brady is a pro athlete, and Cheeks is an is a up-and-coming young YouTube sensation and actor, and they realize they don't want to be a big prominent gay divorce, so they're just going to make a go of it. And then it's Dharma and Greg time, and it's, so they don't know each other very well, but, they're, but they, are, they are struggling through this high-profile marriage, and they are making every mistake in the book just as young marrieds do. Um, and so as we come in on... Episode two, they've been married three weeks, and we're going to see if, uh, if, if the course of true love ever does run smooth. <laughs> and it's also Josh Sweden's biggest acting role, by the way. <laughs> yeah. He plays my sports agent, and uh, he, you'll see in the first episode. Which one are we showing? We're showing episode two. Episode which has, two. Which has, so tell us, Jane. Yes. Where, uh, where are we in the story when episode two picks up? What's going on? Because otherwise, they're not going to know at all what's happening. Um, oh, right. Joss Whedon plays Brady's agent, and he's right. called and said, what? Okay, here's what happened. <laughs> Cheeks tweeted a picture of them kissing. It went out everywhere. The billion moms got angry. The Joss Whedon, the agent, was like, 
Sean, you can't do this. Your husband's too gay. And so <laughs> Brady's like, okay, we're going to do a big national interview, and we're going to be like Kobe, and we're going to apologize to America, and you have to be less gay. And oh. Cheeks does not take well to being told to be less gay and explains that gay is who you sleep with. There is no degrees, and so uh, there's nothing wrong with how he is. Um, but they convince this, this is where they... Um, so that's where we've left off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now we, we join our characters. Wait, with the screen thing. Yeah, your computer timed out. Oh, the computer timed out, whatever. Oh, that I don't know what that means. <laughs> we, we wiggled the thing. He's running, hold on. He's running. <laughs> It's these on, these guys the know exactly what to do. These guys know exactly what to do. Just, it, it's really cool. Watch what they do, and they'll make it all work. It's, okay. it's amazing. See, boom. Uh, Look at that. Okay. Best right. tech staff in the world, guys. Dragon Con Tech Ops. Y'all ready? Is there a way we can dim the lights a little bit, or no? We certainly can. Oh, they're amazing. They Thank can do you. that too. God, this, these massive Ask chandeliers. See what you get. It's awesome. We got Phantom of the Opera chandeliers up here. Are they're either going to dim the them or do drop it? them. Thank you. <laughs> well. Apparently the switch got moved way over there. Oh, I see. Someone's yeah, he's on. running across the room to do it. <laughs> Woohoo! We love you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. What are you doing in here? Prepping for the straightening. <laughs> These are my less gay wardrobe options, but I just seem to keep splooging gay all over them. Regular tees on me, cock tees. These overalls make me look like a hooker hawk fan. <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of a brain spin about what to say for this interview. I mean, I've spent so many years branding myself as someone who embraces stereotypes because disregarding society in favor of one's authenticity is a very important step towards self-love and personal empowerment. So I'm just nervy. I might slip and say something like that is all. Aww. We can sort that out later. Come to bed. Thanks for the reminder. Keeps my teeth nice and straight acting. <laughs> mm. So tight. <laughs> Maybe there's something else we can do before we go to sleep, huh? You know? Mm -hmm. Relieve a little tension, huh? Mm. Well, if you insist. <laughs> Be sure to include my caps too, because they are super temporary. Alright. All right. What is this? Aww. Me. Less gay. <laughs> the least gay. I'm <laughs> gonna <laughs> give you what you want. So from now on, I promise, I won't shove anything <laughs> down anyone's. Throat. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so they're gonna film us cooking and living and maybe some light gardening. I don't know. Oh, realness, exactly. Which is why it has to be staged. Apparently, America's afraid of sexy gays. So the plan is. I arouse mental images of me and Brady drizzled in sauce. <laughs> then, baseball innuendo. Squeeze play, switch hitter, <laughs> base on balls. <laughs> so you're gonna sabotage the interview plus the no sex as revenge thing? Well, that was Brady's idea. Well, he said less gay, and I find literalism to be a very effective point prover. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, Jakes. Well, hi, Mark. Long time no see. I like that shirt. Brady, shoes. 
What? So who's the booty with the cutie on top? Oh, that's Mark. He plays you to break me. Which means they're going to talk about how he's right and I'm wrong. Oh, for sure. But we know the truth. So, go ahead and acknowledge that now. Yes, Jake, we know the truth. <laughs> Star Spangled Hammer. Is it really as ironic? See, I knew you'd be the perfect consultant for this all American mist. Just for sure, isn't it? Cheeks ambush. He wants to sex this interviewer, which would be a disaster. <laughs> what? I just want to keep playing baseball. Same here. But it doesn't stop me from kissing my wife in public. Hell, before I was married, I was photographed licking my way across a Deschanel's face to get to the fanning behind her. No one mentioned morality to me. I'm not asking him to give up baseball. I just, you know, it gets better when people go out there and make better happen. You know, there's more than one way to make better happen. Like the epic poem of the Trojan condom. Mm. Refresh? You know, Greek sailors with defective condoms impregnated all of Troy. Moral being, real change happens when it comes from the inside. Like a chest burster. I have a very small window to live my dream. I mean, people will eventually accept gay canoodling. We don't, we don't need it this minute. So. Oh, yeah, he can wait and keep his mouth shut. At the back of the bus. Aww. Really? We're, we're taking the bus now? Look, change doesn't happen until an outsider comes in and shakes things up. Someone opens their mouth. Like cheeks, slipping you some public tongue. Some Rosa Parks tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so you think by being overtly confrontational, I might prevent the very change I'm working toward. But as a dynamic duo, Brady and I can work within the system to open doors. Sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, <laughs> Get it? This interview is my chance to shake America up, to take a stand, and I will. I will take the stand and testify. That's it? Yeah. Preach that sexy gay love. Yeah! We shall overcome! See, now, that's too far, dude. I'm not gonna sabotage the interview. I'll espionage it. I'll be an acceptable, established, mainstream rebel. From within? Yes. And you can seduce America with its own squareness. <laughs> I will. And just like Greek sperm, nothing's gonna stop me. <laughs> hmm. Okay, uh, when I said Channing, I meant Tatum, not Carol. More contouring. Ugh, this needs to be looser. My sexiness is still discernible. I need looser and you could sublet. Okay, we're ready for you and you can watch from upstairs, okay? Good. How are you? Good. Me too. Me too. Me too. Good. Well, I'm good too. All right, we're all set. Just take your seat. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Fine. I'm better. Me too. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> That's what all the boys say. <laughs> uh, remember, fellas, controversy had a baby and called it ratings. So uh, go for it. Mahalo. I'm Vic Del Rey, and welcome to Hi America Live. What do you think, Jack? Comedic climax or Hollywood disaster call? I'll oh, get ready to pay up, Jess. My boy Kelly's going for it. Not a chance. He'll choke and play it straight. Always does. Gorgeous Hollywood Hills estate. New home for Billy Webb, Brady Cheeks. Vic Del Rey. Honored. Feelings mutual, Vic. Welcome to our damn good home. Whoa, <laughs> Sir Snargon, huh, bro? And what a deck, am I right? <laughs> yes, we enjoy the deck for smart conversation with John Hodgman. Oh, I, uh, I believe we have some home movie footage of that. This is us. That's us. Right? You see what I'm saying? Give me the drink. A good man. So, before we go on, uh, Cheeks, I'm afraid I have to ask, about the name. <laughs> you seen his ass? Uh, common misconception. Cheeks is short for Cheekstenson, which, of 
course, is Danish. Oh, because he's a tasty little pastry with yummy, creamy filling. <laughs> Oh, what's gotten into you? <laughs> Must be what you put into me this morning. Oh. Uh, uh, Daddy, stop! Crafting me the paint, Kelly! Now bust the tongue. Bust the tongue. <laughs> you know, what? why don't we go upstairs and, and we can cook some dinner. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? I follow you guys anywhere. <laughs> this has to come. I'm doing it with, but I'm, I'm willing to talk about anything you guys want to talk about. My whole career. You want me to list my career? Do we, yeah. do we have that? Yeah. Time? I'm too old to list it all. <laughs> well, how about a few questions then? Yeah. Let's start over here. Hi. Get down in that mic. Son, there, there we go. are. Oh. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. So, um, I'll just start off by saying I love knowing how the sausage is made. So, in terms <laughs> of uh, your writing career, uh, and I guess just between Joss and Ron. <laughs> oh my god, don't make me choose. <laughs> now, well, just in terms, could you kind of, because you seem to have, in other podcasts and other interviews, you really described that working with them seem to be like kind of the high points of your career. Mm -hmm. But they both have two different working styles. Mm -hmm. and I wonder if you can speak a little bit to that, kind of give, you know, who's the tyrant, who's the despot, and who's the, you know, <laughs> I what's, like, yeah. I like that those are the choices, who's the tyrant and who's the despot. Um, top down and bottom up is the difference, that um, uh, Joss is very much, the ideas come from Joss. There was, I don't know if there, there were very few episodes of Buffy that weren't an idea that he had. Um, and every step of every scene was really coming from him. Um, Ron Moore was all about sort of bottom-up inclusion. Um, everybody came in with ideas, including like you when you, when a script was done, it was sent to the actors, and the actors had feedback. Oh, my character actually learned this lesson already, or said something very similar in another scene. Can we look at this? Can we change that? And it was an open conversation. Lots of emails going back and forth. Every writer read every other writer's script and was free to give uh, their opinion and notes on it. So it was that, that was the main difference, was just whether or not you have the, the very clear vision that pushes down versus the clear vision that guides with a gentle hand on the tiller. And I'd say that's a big difference. And they're both geniuses. And I would have sworn after Joss that that was the best and only way to have a clear vision come across. And then I saw the wrong way to do it. And I was like, oh, there's, there's two ways to make a cat without skin on it. <laughs> food, you're right. I always go to a food metaphor. <laughs> now, do you, you think, what was it you said last night? Oh, was something about, yeah, you were saying, oh, we were looking for a word, and uh, she said, what about skewer? And I said, okay, and then she said, skewer, uh, shish kebab of fun. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, food. <laughs> but you said related questions were good. What about Russell T. Davies? Oh, did you just continue that question with Russell? Um, Russell is, oh, sort of in between. Um, Russell, well, actually, it's very interesting. Russell came in having worked in the British system, um, which apparently is this, um, you work out very broad strokes of what the episode's gonna be, then the writer goes out and essentially sort of breaks the episode themselves. Decide, okay, I know what facts have to come out, what, what needs to be established, what emotional moves have to happen in this episode, but I can kinda go off on my own and pick the scenes and I'll bring it back to Russell and he and I will sit down one on one, the writer's room will disband, there'll be no more room, and you just come in and work one with one with him and you'll do eight or nine drafts of it to get it to where, where it's going to be and it's this very evolving process. The American writers under him were like, wait, oh, whoa, don't send me home yet, I don't know enough about what you really want, what order you want these scenes and exactly how do you want this to look. He was like, reluctantly, like, okay, we can, I guess we can sit here for another week, I'm not sure what we're gonna do. We sat there for like another month and like worked it out and at the end of it he was like, oh, I get why you do this. Um, so I guess I saw Russell's process evolve and change. Um, so I guess it's sort of hard to pin down whether he's the guy that, that, that controls it or lets you go, sort of 
sort of, I guess, depending on what the writers need from him. Um, but that we're still doing that sort of eight or nine drafts of it thing um, because there's he just constantly pushes you. He's always saying, you can do better, you can go deeper. I'm not crying yet. I want this to make me cry. And so there was um, a great sense of learning from everyone involved that you were 